Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's November 25th, 2016. I'm your host, Owen Schroyer. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. I hope that everybody had a great Thanksgiving, enjoyed plenty of good food, remembered everything that they had to be thankful for here in this great country of America and on this great planet Earth. I hope that there weren't too many feuds at dinner over politics. Who knows, maybe you can find some common ground with those relatives that you were feuding over last Thanksgiving. I know that myself, I did a little gloating because I accurately predicted that Trump would win just a year ago. I hope that you have taken advantage of our Black Friday specials that are going on right now at InfoWarsStore.com. The new Brain Force Plus Plus more pills, more powerful pills. Brain Force, one of the favorite products of our listeners at InfoWarsStore.com. And there's plenty more where that came from. There's also more news. Be sure to stick around on the other side. Well, ever since the WikiLeaks emails showed spirit cookings related to the Podesta brothers, the hashtag Pizzagate has also been trending when it was discovered that they were using strange code languages within these emails. Now, a lot of people have been talking about this. It's been huge on social media. And I just want to have this ca uh, caveat here before I bring on Joe and Maggie to talk about Pizzagate and everything about it. Now, a lot of people have been begging us to draw more attention to this. And for a lot of people, Pizzagate is what has started their path down the rabbit hole. So they're freaking out. They think this is the worst thing on the planet. And I'm not saying it's not or it couldn't be. I'm just saying there are a lot of other big things going on that InfoWars has to focus and report on. We cannot just divert all of our time to this. So I'm sorry if you aren't satisfied with our coverage, but here's the problem. We're going to come on here. We're going to talk about everything. We're going to cover all of it, and it still won't satisfy people because I cannot tell you what happened to Maddie McCann the night she was abducted. I cannot tell you whether John and Tony Podesta were in Portugal with their friend uh, Sir Clement that night she was abducted. I cannot tell you if James Alphonsus is running a child pedophilia ring. I cannot go into the basement of Comet Pizza and raid it and search around, okay? I can't do any of that. We can come on here and we can talk about all the alleged activity. We can talk about all the scathing stuff that we found via WikiLeaks, uh, FEC, and all the connections that people out there have made. But I still cannot satisfy you on those grounds. So, we're going to report on this. We're going to talk all about it. And I just, I don't know what the answer is as far as what we do next, guys. But I just, I don't know. I feel like we need to provide that caveat because people are just, they're so upset by this. Mm -hmm. The ties are so deep. It's so weird. And yet there seems to be nothing being done. Joe Biggs. Well, you know, a lot of it is speculation. A lot of it is if you look at something hard enough, you're going to see what it is you want to see at the end of the day. When, when, when you've made so many connections to something, you're going to, end up making more connections and more connections and more connections. It's just like that movie with Jim Carrey, the number 13, I think it is, where 13 is tied to all these things and it just spirals out of control. And, you know, one plus three is this and this and that, and it goes and goes. But what we can tell you, for one, that the Clintons have been involved with Jeffrey Epstein. We do know that. You know, that is a fact. We know that spirit cooking is a pretty screwed up thing that John Podesta and many other celebrities have been involved in. We do know that Anthony Weiner, the husband of Huma Abedin, uh, Clinton's uh, closest aide, uh, was sexing young women who were underage. Mm -hmm. We know that Comet Ping Pong Pizza is owned by a guy who used to date the guy uh, for Media Matters, uh, David, David Brock. Brock. Right. So, you know, there are some things out there that are interesting that could, you know, with that being said to start this off, mm -hmm. maybe there are some things going on. Not saying that pedophile rings don't exist. I'm sure that they are, but right now everything is very alleged. So, but what we can do is talk about, you know, what do we do now? You know, there's Podesta emails right now. A Podesta email from WikiLeaks says, still in torture chamber. You know, that's kind of weird. You know, what does that mean? Uh, the realtor found a handkerchief. I think it's a map that seems pizza related. Now there are different meanings for map and there's different meanings for handkerchief. Apparently, if you go look up handkerchief code, that's an actual thing where gay men uh, use these different colors to break down what it is they're looking for, BDSM, uh, you know, things that I can't really mention on here, different types of sex, uh, bondage, piercing, it, it goes on and on. So they're saying this in an email, and it's very suspicious. What does it mean? But at the end of the day, it still is alleged. We don't have any concrete evidence 
as to what it is pertaining to. And unfortunately, again, I can't force the Podestas to make a comment on this. I can't call up John or Tony Podesta and say, hey, why are you talking about spirit cookings? Why are you appearing to be talking in code language in your emails? Why do you have strange artwork in your house? I mean, these are things that we just can't do. Now, I guess if the more people get involved, the more people start talking about it, maybe we can force the issue. But now we're seeing stories breaking just saying that fake news is covering this or stories breaking saying that child pedophilia isn't a crime but just a disorder. Margaret, what do you think? Look, so when you tweeted this out this morning that we were going to be talking about this, Twitter opened up. It retweet, reach I literally I had to shut my phone off at a certain point because I had to focus on nightly news. You literally, literally if you want to pick up Twitter over followers, over just over hashtag Pizza Gate. You'll, you'll Gate. get a hundred. And we are actively I, I want to say this to our audience. We have a heart for the truth. I I know I know these guys up here, we really want to get to the bottom of this and we want to bring you the right information. Here's the problem. So this let's just take James Elephantis for a moment, the the uh, owner of Com Ping Pong Pizza, Comet Pizza, and uh, his partner alleged David Brock, uh, the relationship between the two. David Brock is knee deep in the Clinton machine. Uh, he's he's a very high high level political figure. That his boyfriend. There's a lot of speculation about the business that he owns. Here's the problem. So James Elephantis has gone on the attack. There's an article in the New York Times where he insinuates that us, the fake media, are out to cyber bully him and destroy his life his reputation and his business. Here's the problem. So mainstream media news articles, this one, uh, WUSA, which is not a mainstream media, it's inside the Beltway. They have gone on the attack. Anybody in the fake news trying to cyber bully him, he's managed to get Reddit, Facebook, even Twitter to censor and remove anything related to Comet Ping Pong Pizza, anything related to him as a person. And they're they're playing by these weird rules that says any personal information on websites like these, we are we are liable as we're subject to a lawsuit if in fact we indict him in something that we cannot prove. That's the problem. Now, going back to what Joe Biggs said, this stuff is awful those emails literally when i first read these emails you and i were on the air it was it was during election week coverage and i couldn't sleep at night thinking about the possibility of how sick these people are we know that the clintons are criminals we have documented that well here we had a presidential candidate say look when i'm in office you're going to jail we do know that what we don't know is what these emails signify what they mean do they have any involvement it looks like to me as a reporter i'm speaking specifically on my own my own merit not Infowars, not alex jones for me personally reading these WikiLeak emails it looks like some really fishy crap that doesn't sit well with anybody looking at them and the fact that this Comet ping pong crap is is in play right now and this man's gone on the attack, we're very limited as to what we can say because a lot of this information is, of course, alleged. Therein lies the problem. It's very frustrating as reporters for us to bring this because, look, we freaking hate pedophiles, okay? I'm just going to say that right now. There is nothing more despicable to me as a person on the earth. It's the thought of somebody molesting or abusing children. It is physically sickening when you think about it. And the, the fact that these two Podesta guys, who frankly are weird as weird as all get out, I'm sorry, but they are. And that's not a that's not a statement of fact. That's a personal opinion. The fact that we have, you know, these weird, crappy, strange emails that we can't explain. And the fact that we've got, you know, this pedophile possible pedophile code is very alarming and unfortunately for us and i know that we're not going to let this go past today we continue to dig we continue to look at this information is given to us as reporters all the time people send emails like you wouldn't believe and you got to verify them and and there lies the frustration for me as a person but i will say this that elephantus character has gone on the attack for the fake news and the fact that the new york times is defending him i have a serious problem with that everybody else has gotten on the bandwagon except for us we're sticking out our necks you know people there there have been alleged deaths over this kind of stuff and yet we're still covering it because we want people to know what we know well how, how is a guy named uh, a guy alifontis one of the top most uh, influential people in america and he's just a pizza Seriously. pie store owner supposedly you that's know. actually a great point he's got all this international money he seems to have tons of political leverage a pizza shop owner mm -hmm. that's i mean it's not i'm not saying it's not possible obviously yeah. it would be possible <laughs> but I don't know. Point to one other instance. I mean, is that. Papa John's one of the most influential people? That guy? I mean, I don't, you know? Papa John's is a major pizza chain. I don't see Papa John's holding any. Uh, well, or, or, or having or like women that. or little girls yeah. taped down to a desk. Which I mean, but look at this though. New York Times has an article: pedophilia, a disorder 
not a crime. And now well, we're seeing these articles the come out more and, and more. And you have people like Salon who cover these stories where they actually have pedophiles come on mm -hmm. and talk about, you know, holding some little girl and saying, oh, I looked at her, but I never touched her. Or I, I would never do that. I, I just fantasize about it. I'm sorry, the fact that you're fantasizing about that is it right in any kind of way? Mm -hmm. That's not normal. It's not a disorder. That is a crime. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's horrible. And remember, we've got Joe Biden who fondles children allegedly on the camera. No, 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 no. That's not we alleged. Have, we have, we to have be footage. Here because listen, now hold on a second. Jo you have footage of Joe Biden groping children on tape. Okay, they come to the White House and he touches and rubs them and whispers in their ear. That's not alleged. Look. That happened. I'm not saying he did anything illegal. I'm saying that happened, and then he also gets a bracelet with a pizza bead on it, uh, allegedly from Barack Obama. More weird stuff. And then, of course, as we said, all this major political money going through Comet Ping Pong and Pizza. But I would think if I was some sort of a, uh, a big, tough rogue agent who was really thirsty for justice in either the Washington police. It, yeah, here's the footage. Either in the Washington, D.C. police, either in the FBI, anywhere. Why wouldn't you be gung ho going in? Okay, you know that what I'm is, saying? That is some disturbing crap. I, I guess you've disturbing. never seen that. No, I've seen it. I just I want to be I want to be careful to say alleged because I understand the implication of saying something as a reporter when I can't when it's not. Oh gosh, I well, understand. It gets me a little. I'm sorry. Well, there's a lot of things that can kind of be you know uh, debunked as well. Yeah. The whole walnut sa sauce thing. I mean, that's an actual. A Ligarian sauce that people use. It's a it's a it's a cultural thing. A lot of people do make walnut sauce and use it for pastas. So that's not really out of the ordinary. Um, the whole thing about can't wait to go to your hot dog stand in Hawaii. Well, I actually got on and I looked up hot dog there stands in Hawaii, stands and there's Hawaii. quite a few of them throughout Hawaii. They do exist. And you have uh, Tony Podesta, John Podesta's brother, who has these uh, statues and this artwork that resembles. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, the way he left his people uh, posed. The, There's weird things that are going on. And not to mention his favorite artist depicts little girls being hit. in Biljana de Gervais. It's disgusting. It's the most despicable stuff. Why you would ever have that in your house is mind-boggling. You know, depicting children being abused for pleasure. That, that's what these art pieces are. And, and everybody is, you know, sitting here because they want to, you know, they want to be part of this. They want to be part of the justice revolution via we the people, and they want this Pizzagate to be huge. But let's keep in mind as, you know, Pizzagate is ongoing, who knows what sort of investigations are being done. I don't know if the FBI is investigating or not. I don't know if the Washington Police Department is investigating or not. I don't know. James Alephantis uh, hasn't made any statement as far as that concerned. Well, there was, there was a girl who, uh, codenamed Molly on Twitter, whose account was taken down the other day after she started posting And Reddit files. was taken down, too. Well, she tweeted out today, and I don't know if this is, is real again. She could have created another one, but we'll say that it's maybe her. Uh, said just spoke to the FBI about uh, mm -hmm. Pizzagate, and they all kind of, you know, brushed it yeah, off. Yeah, they said didn't it wasn't talk something about it. But what, are we, but what do we do know, though, actually? I mean, let's talk about things that really do exist within pedophilia rings and all that. I mean, hot dog in their lingo means boy. Pizza means girl. Cheese means little girl. Pasta means little boy. Ice cream means male prostitute. Walnut means person of color. Map means, I uh, can't say that word, and sauce is orgy. I've seen different, perhaps, meanings of walnut, too, which we don't need to get into. But here's the thing. Whether or not this code is code for pedophilia, again, this is all alleged. But we actually know. I mean, you've got Jimmy Savelle. You've got Dennis Hastert. You mentioned Anthony Weiner earlier. I mean, you've already got major, major political influencers that have been brought down, involved with, you know, sex acts, Dennis sexual Hastert, deviance. For those of you, and I literally, following this man's crimes, he was actually, he wasn't even convicted of the crimes he was committed of. You know, bank This is a, this, is, this image, by the way, is a web that somebody made on the internet that links it all. Go ahead, Margaret. Oh, gosh. And just getting on the, and I know we're running out of time here, but there are, to, to your point, there are insanely sick powerful people in this country Dennis Hastert being a prime classic example of that getting on you know the con you know the the defense of marriage as speaker of the house and it turns out he was molesting little boys for decades trying to pay them off as adults we know that this is happening it's incredibly frustrating to not be able to I want us to make a dent in this guys I really do and that's where my frustration comes in with the stuff because we we don't the information that's coming out we're needing 
really concrete things to go on. And if people have anything, by all means, send them. Send them. Send them on Twitter. We don't care for censored Frank. Send them if you've got anything that's that's breaking or that you think could matter in this. Because literally, that's what it's going to take to put this over the edge and make somebody in law enforcement take a serious look at the stuff prior to just going, oh, it's fake news, trying to smear political opponents. That is not what's going on here. Dennis Hastert was a Republican, by the way. He was not a Democrat. He's one of the sickest mother. You know, I'm sorry, guys. Served under the Clinton, <laughs> served under the Clinton and the Bush administrations. And again, it's just weird. I mean, this is in doubt. This is in D.C. We know that there's tunnels in this area. The people who own a lot of these buildings on this block can be tied together with mm -hmm. political contributions. So, again, it's all very strange. One of the, one of the emails, which is definitely odd. Do you think I'll do better playing dominoes on cheese and on pasta? I mean, at the end of the day, that, that that's kind of like code talk. I mean, that, it's code talk. That, that, that's I mean, not a normal thing. Like, you, you you don't you don't text or you know email your buddy. Hey, you want some dominoes on your hamburger or something mm -hmm. like that? Like, what the hell is that? Like, that's something you've come up with and you're using it's to get around classic, something. Alleged pedophile code. That's what that is. It does seem though. Then you mentioned we, we came in because so many people were wanting us to draw more attention to this. So many people were wanting us to break news on this. When in reality, folks, I mean, it's pretty much been you out there who enjoy getting your hands dirty in this type of research that have been breaking most of this stuff, doing most of this. But it does seem it's kind of started to go mainstream. RT um, out of Germany, I believe it was today, that I had to have this one translated here. Pizzagate holds the net in hand presumptions about Washington's pedophile ring in the Clinton environment. It's been alleged for years, folks, that there is a ring of pedophiles in Washington, D.C., that there is a ring of pedophiles that have been blackmailed into positions of power and then maintained those people via blackmail. This is something that's very serious that's been alleged. So could this be the tip of the spear? Could this be the string that pulls it all down? I don't know. Right now, we can only tell you what we know. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Margaret. We'll be right back with more. Earlier this week, we saw a lot of stories about how family members were getting uninvited to Thanksgiving dinners. And, of course, that's a favorite tactic of the authoritarian left. Shut down discussion. Don't have any discussion of the principles. And, of course, how better to do that than to keep people from being able to uh, to, to have people in your family come and uh, talk about uh, Thanksgiving or just sh share some time with you, talk about politics. No, 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 no. Talk about any of that. Just shut it down. And now that we're into the Christmas season, we're going to be seeing a lot of that. We've already seen a story earlier this week about the U.S. Army shutting down a small uh, band that was basically playing uh, guitar and banjo mandolin. Uh, so, no, no, you can't do jingle bells on a local radio show because your your association came together via the army so you can't play that kind of music anymore you have to understand this is a new thing this is something that we've seen gradually increasing over a long period of time understand that the censorship of the left on the first amendment began first not against political free speech but it began with the attack on the free exercise of religion and that's what the First Amendment guarantees. It's a natural human right that we have to freely exercise uh, our religion. And yet we have seen them say that any free exercise of religion is establishment. So I want to take a quick look at this and distinguish between establishment and the free exercise religion. Because usually when we see this talked about, like on Fox News, Bill O'Reilly talks about the war on Christmas. Megyn Kelly tells us that Santa Claus is a white guy. That's the level of engagement that we see typically there. And they miss the broad themes of both the Constitution and Christianity. So I want to go back and talk about what establishment really is. Let's go back to history, to the founding of this country, to 1776, and what this was all about. Of course, prior to 1776, the people who came to this country came here because they wanted to avoid a theocracy, the combination of religion and State And, of course, that was done throughout Europe, not because the people were highly religious, but because they used both the religion uh, and the king to keep people in line. And so they rebelled against that. They had prohibitions in Europe about attending church services that were not the official state service. You were required to financially support the official state. You were required to go to the services, not just be uh, prohibited from attending the services that you wanted to attend, but you were also mandated to re attend the uh, church services of the official state church. And when they came to the United States and the various uh, uh, colonies that were set up that eventually became states, they typically were centered around religious affiliation. 
So you'd have different states supporting different Christian denominations. That was true establishment. Now, most of them remove the prohibition of not attending an unofficial state church, but they still required in virtually all cases that you financially support the established state church, they would require that you attend those services. That is the establishment. And if you think that that went away when the Bill of Rights was passed in 1799, you're wrong. I want to challenge that assumption with historical facts. As Michael McConnell noted in the William and Mary Law Review, he said establishment survived in New England well into the 19th century. Remember the Bill of Rights was passed in 1791. He says disestablishment came to Connecticut in 1818. But not until 1833 in Massachusetts. New Hampshire enacted a Toleration Act in 1818, but authorization for towns to financially support Protestant ministers remained on the books unenforced for the rest of the century. So even into the 20th century, they were still allowing churches to be supported by the town government. Think about that. After the Bill of Rights was passed in 1791, 27 years later, they still had an official state church in Connecticut. 28 years later, they still had an official state church in New Hampshire. And 42 years later, they still had an official state church in Massachusetts. Was that a good idea? No, it's a horrible idea. None of us wants a theocracy. I don't want to be, I don't, Baptists don't want to be forced to go to a Methodist church or to uh, financially support a Methodist church. And even Muslims, you don't want to, Sunni Muslims don't want to be forced to participate in a Wahhabist, uh, Saudi Arabia style uh, theocracy, a Sharia law. That's why so many of us are so concerned about Sharia law, because Sharia law is a theocracy. And if you understand Islam, at the heart of Islam is a theocratic urge. But when we look at the free exercise of religion, it means that you don't become uh, a creature of the state. You're not owned by the state simply because you have a job with the state. Think about it in terms of the other part of the First Amendment, your political free speech. Do you lose the ability to vote or to uh, speak freely on politics simply because you work for the government or you wear a uniform? No, you don't do it in an official capacity, and the Army has its own regulations, whether that's good or bad, about what soldiers can say. I don't think they should have a gag order placed on them, but that is a rule that's uh, done by the Army. That is not something that is constitutional. When Thomas Jefferson spoke about a wall of separation between church and state, he was writing to reassure preachers in Baptist Rhode Island that he was not going to interfere with their free exercise of religion. Instead, what we see now is that the government has perverted that and inverted that, in, uh, that intention. He was saying there's going to be a wall around the government that is going to separate it from you. And now what we see is the federal government, who constitutionally cannot be involved in any way, shape, or form in religion, putting a wall around us, around individuals, and telling us what we can and cannot do, mostly falling on people who work for the government, but also doing this through the schools. So we have the government, the schools, the media, who really have established a religion. William F. Buckley said atheists have their gods, and they're fiercely worshipped. And we can see this in Russia, as the people there uh, want to replace a street that is called Godless Street. It was named that by the communists, who are proudly atheists. And they named not one but two streets in that small town, Godless Street. And now these people are petitioning to change that street name to Donald Trump. And so we understand that there is a state religion pushed by the government, by the schools, by the media. That is a religion of secular humanism. It is proudly atheist. And they try to suppress the free exercise of religion. We've seen the same type of inversion, of course, with the uh, FISA bill. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act that was done in the late 70s after they had looked at the abuses of the CIA and the NSA, the abuses against the Fourth Amendment, spying on Americans without warrant. And they said, you're not going to do that. So they created the FISA Act. What did they do over the remaining uh, 40 years? They used the FISA Act as a rubber stamp for them to violate the Fourth Amendment. So we have to constantly... Be vigilant against these usurpations of power, against the inversion of the Constitution, against the, uh, the use of their position of power in ways that are total abuse of the authority given to them by the Constitution. And that's what we're going to be seeing as we move uh, towards the Christmas season. I just want to say that, you know, we should be talking about the freedom to say Merry Christmas. And when we see Fox News, we see Donald Trump pull this up and they say... Um, 
uh, Merry Christmas, and we have the freedom to say that. And that that's not what the free exercise of religion is, but it's a start. And I think that we all need to be able to uh, do not only that, but we need to challenge the fundamental assumptions of the government. And I'll say one more thing before we run out of time here, and that is the impositions on the free exercise of not only religious but political speech that were imposed by the gag rules put in effect by Johnson when he was uh, not yet president, Lyndon Johnson, uh, put in the Johnson Act. The IRS said, we're going to take away your tax exemption uh, as a church. We're going to take away and impute back to the people who have contributed to this church all of that money in retrospect. We're going to impute that back to them, take away their deduction, create a massive headache for them, take away your funding if you talk about politics. They had no authority to do that. And I think it's very important, and this is what we need to do. We don't need to wait for somebody to give us permission to exercise our religion. That is a fundamental right that is protected in the Constitution. And we don't need a president. We don't need a governor. We don't need a congressman to give us that authorization. And when people like uh, bureaucracies like the IRS take that away from us, we need to stand up in defiance, as many pastors have on Pastor Freedom Sunday, and say, here's a recording of my sermon where I talk about politics, exercising both my first, both parts of the First Amendment, the free exercise of religion and my political free speech. Here it is, IRS. Take away my tax deduction if you dare. They called their bluff. The IRS has never come after any of these pastors. It grew from a handful of defiant pastors now to thousands who do that every year. That is the essence of how we take back our freedoms with a massive grassroots rebellion against the tyrants. Infowars.com on our nightly news. I'm David Knight wishing you a Merry Christmas. Be sure to exercise your religion freely and in their face. Black Friday is now unofficially a global holiday phenomenon. The day after Thanksgiving that harkens the beginning of the month-long celebration of consumerism, regardless of the fact that most Americans can't even afford the holiday season. 62% of Americans have less than $1,000 in savings, and 21% don't have savings at all. Sales expected to reach $80 billion in the U.S. The average American spending close to $400 throughout the holiday weekend. While the mega soul-sucking Walmart chains deliver Chinese goods to most of the depleted American population, while slave wage Walmart employees are subsidized by our tax dollars, allowing the Scrooge Walton family to rip out the heart of America and crush small business. The irony is that Black Friday stems from a 19th century gold swindling conspiracy. And now in the name of almighty consumerism, Americans are being swindled out of their last dimes, ethics, and common sense. I'm a heavy consumer. And you know, <laughs> I'm concerned about what my children consume. <laughs> Black Friday is a complete scam based around the manifestly provable hoax that consumers are getting huge discounts on products that would normally be more expensive at any other time of year. In reality, stores enjoy higher profit margins during the holiday period because retailers artificially inflate prices of goods in the months before Black Friday in order to make the subsequent discounts look good in comparison. As the Wall Street Journal highlights, the idea of Black Friday discounts is a complete hoax achieved via the process of price massaging throughout the rest of the year. The scam also relies on shopper's impulse, buying another product that has 98% markup value. So even if the first item represents a genuine discount, the vastly inflated price of the impulse purchase more than makes up for it. In many cases, the supposedly great deals that people will sacrifice endless hours of their time camping outside stores to take advantage of are already available online anyway and can be found for even cheaper in January. But hey, nothing says Christmas like braving the cold on Thanksgiving night to rip a vegetable steamer out of the hands of an innocent little kid. What is behind the horrifying phenomenon of Black Friday and other extreme consumerist riots. 
What is behind it is the madness of a lost society. People that believe in hype. People that believe in mainstream media lies. Folks that don't know that Black Friday is one of the worst days of the year to go out and find sales. These are the same type of crowds that believe in Obamacare and thought that it would really be a free ride or who go and buy lottery tickets. That's their future business plan. Uh, that's their retirement plan. These are born suckers. And statistically, there are more and more of them. Merry Christmas, zombies. John Bound for Infowars.com. Do you think that Black Friday has a racist connotation? Not really. Honestly, yeah. Thinking about that, I never really thought about it in that way with racist connotations. Um, I can see how it could be um, definitely offensive to people. I, I don't know where my opinion stands on it. As far as that goes, sorry, I, I'm just going to... I'm not familiar with the historical uh, connotations of Black Friday. So I'm not sure if that question even applies or not. Like it could, it could not, but I just don't know. I don't even know what the beginning of Black, what are like the beginnings of Black Friday? Where does like the origin of it? Well, no one really knows, but there are a lot of things that people are alleging and it's kind of like a Black Lives Matter uh, concern with this, that, that it had something to do with slavery and that they would sell their slaves at a discount in order to, you know, get the plantations uh, filled with workers for the harsh winter. I think I did hear that before. But I mean, now they do it for discount items. Every year, this people kind of, they get a little bit offended by it. And so really? we- Really? Yeah. I didn't even know that, dude. Okay, the problem is who is being offended? Like, is it like the non-black community or is it the black community? Because if the black community is offended, then I would be more for changing it than if like someone who wasn't black was offended. You know, because they're the only ones who get to decide whether or not something has offensive connotations to them. Because they're the community has lived through the historical implications. Do you think we should Sorry. rename Black Friday? <laughs> no. No? No. Why is that? Have you checked your privilege? Well, actually, I'm going to reverse that statement. Now that I actually thought it through, I could see where racism would come up. There should definitely be a new name for it. Um, I'm not sure, but... Any ideas? Well, something that would be more color neutral or... I mean, I wouldn't go color then since that's still like race implied, I guess. No, if, if people will agree with that opinion, then yeah, of course it's, it's not right. But what would they change it to? Do you have any ideas? African American Friday. Okay, that's a good potential. You gotta have something that has a ring to it. Yeah, it, that's the thing. You can't think of anything that has a ring to it. At least they didn't use the N word. <laughs> the annual Walmart brawl. How about that? <laughs> I mean, why would anybody go? It sounds like an awful way to spend a day. Yeah. Getting beat up. Maybe they call it Black Friday because you have to be like a black belt in karate to, you know. That could be it. Discount day. Don't kill each other day, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's not for me to decide. That's for the community to decide what is and isn't offensive to them and what's in a suitable replacement. Racist or not racist? Not racist. <laughs> I think people would have to speak up. And if people were to say something, if it was something that was heard by the population, I think people would sympathize with it if it was something that they felt was racist. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not necessarily true, though, I, I see a lot on college campuses right now, a lot of things are happening because of the way people feel, because they're offended, because it's the, you know it upsets them with the way they feel, even though it might not necessarily be truth or no evidence to it. If someone is a, generally finds something like offensive, then we should find like the best way to like accommodate everyone and the way that we act with each other and the way that we speak because they're like, they go kind of hand in hand I think so yeah if, if they want something to change then I think it's it's for the better if it if it makes people feel better go for it you think this is a smart direction we're going in 
Hopefully he is. Feelings smart. over facts? I hope, well, we should do facts over feelings first, and I hope it is a fact, because we're in a college age. If, if they don't know what they're talking about, then... Lower prices and don't kill each other. <laughs> Everything must go. As long as it's racist. <laughs> Globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Well, folks, in the last week, we have now seen five police officers get shot in the line of duty, multiple fatally. The most recent in Detroit, cops fear copycat attacks across the U.S. after a fifth officer is shot in three days. Colin Rose, 29, was shot just a few blocks from Wayne State University at about 6.45 p.m. on Tuesday after D'Angelo Davis the suspect of person of interest in the shooting has been taken into custody. So again, the attacks on police are stepping up. Regardless of where you feel on this issue, that is a fact. This is an illustration of the divide of this country and the fomenting of a civil war, whether it be between black and white people, cops and citizens. This is what the establishment wants, to divide us so that it can conquer us. And again, I say, you know, why there could be a Blue Lives Matter protest going on right now. We don't see those happening, um, but it's 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 reaching a point now. And I don't see the mainstream media or the Obama administration batting an eye at any of these police shootings. I mean, it's really shocking, folks. Whenever a cop shoots a civilian, especially if that civilian is black, they make a huge deal out of it. Whether it's justified or not, you can have that debate. We let the justice system work that out. That, that is an issue to many people. But we don't get near the coverage when it's a police officer. And especially in the instance where they say, guns are the problem. We need to stop guns. That's the, that's the fault of all these shootings. Well, I don't see any legislation being passed on guns when police are shot. So that's an interesting dynamic there. Now, another uh, more illustration of the divide in this country, Queen... A man in Queens has been cuffed for trying to push somebody onto the Harlem tracks. And he allegedly, allegedly yelled, I hate white people, before he tried to shove this man onto the tracks. And again, if you put this in the opposite spectrum, and it was a white man who said, I hate black people, and pushed him onto a train, it would be the biggest story on CNN tonight. I would be shocked if CNN even mentions that story. Pair charged an explosive device at elementary school, planned to shoot cops and start a race war. A convicted felon who claims he wanted to shoot cops is behind bars in connection with the explosive device planted outside of a Trustville elementary school. Man, I promise, though, <laughs> at the end of this segment, I will have some good news, but apparently... These two wanted to start a race war. I pray to God. And we're all right, look, you know what? Sane people are over the whole race thing, okay? Sane people don't look at the other person and judge them based on their skin, okay? It just doesn't happen. And unfortunately, there is a fringe element of our society that is still racist. And you will probably never be able to do anything about these people. 
But fomenting these tensions is not helping. And that, to me, is what the mainstream media and even the Obama administration has done. And I think we're seeing the fruits of some of those efforts, if you will. Now, moving on, Facebook is trying to create censorship. We know about this. This has been big stories with fake news. But now, in order to get back into the Chinese market, Facebook is going to go ahead and cater to the Chinese style of censorship. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook's chief executive, has cultivated a relationship with Chinese leaders and is now going to work with them to you know, censor his Facebook however it is the Chinese want. And, of course, we know now, and, of course, Alex Jones has been saying this for a while, but now they are admitting it. They want Chinese-style censorship on the Internet. Now, the handover of the Internet happened here just over a month ago. We are yet really to see any big changes. I think that's because, um, you know, there's not much that they can do or they want to tell us. But if this censorship starts to get brought in and the American people don't have a say, um, then it will be an issue. But this is Mark Zuckerberg now censoring Facebook in China in order to get back into the Chinese markets. And now, of course, you have Merkel, who is warning against fake news, driving populist gains. So this is what they're going to do to stop the populist movement, folks. They want to stop the populist movement. See, you're not allowed to have a movement. We, the people of planet Earth, we, the populism movement, we're not allowed to have our movement. See, Obama says, Fake news is spurring the populist movement. Merkel says fake news is spurring the populist movement. So what are they going to do? Because they can't control your mind anymore. Their bought and paid for media failed. Their politicians and their propaganda failed. So what are they going to do? They're going to use Mark Zuckerberg and people of his ilk to censor the Internet. And then they're going to have their government operatives come out and say, well, we need to stop fake news because I can't even believe she says that it's she's admitting it. Populism is rising. That's that's us. That's you. That's we, the people. <laughs> that's civilians. That's citizens empowering themselves. So what are they going to do? They're just going to say anything that goes against the establishment's narrative, anything that is populism taking over corruption, they're just going to say it's fake, and they're going to try to squander it. And they're even going to admit it. Merkel warns against fake news driving populist gains. So that's right, folks. Any real movement of we, the people, any grassroots organic movement, it's just fake. It's just fake. We need to squander it because it's fake. It's like them, them trying to tell you that we got this election wrong because we were given misinformation. No, the exact opposite happened. Your misinformation failed. We got this election right. Get over it. Now, of course, they're going to try to spin this somehow. Here's a story out of the L.A. Times. GQ and other lifestyle magazines grapple with flubbed Trump coverage. Ha! So we're going to talk about lifestyle magazines. Now, there's the image. Let's face it. Donald Trump is about to lose wrong. We're talking about lifestyle magazines. OK, so a lifestyle magazine gets the election wrong. That's OK, right? It's a lifestyle magazine. No big whoop. But how about the fact that every major television news network also got it wrong? Can you imagine the hysteria? Of course, we witnessed it on air. You've seen the video compilations. But... What are they going to do, folks? Everybody knows they got it wrong. How are they going to recover? Fake news, fake news, fake news. That's how they're going to recover. They're going to, they can't admit that they're the fake news. They can't admit that they failed and they got it wrong. They have to just say that, well, everybody else got it wrong because of fake news. Unbelievable that we're actually witnessing this. Now, Megyn Kelly has released a book. I'm not even going to say the title because I don't want to give it any publicity at all. But it's failing miserably. And because of it, it's a miserable failure. Amazon is now squashing Trump trolls attacks on Megyn Kelly book. How do you even know it's Trump trolls? How about it's just people that don't like her book or don't like her? But they just want to demonize Trump and his supporters any way they can. So they had to throw this in, this one in there for the USA Today. But it's funny. This, this book is failing so miserably for Megyn Kelly. Of course it is, Megyn. Maybe if you weren't such a... You know what? I'm not going to waste time insulting Megyn Kelly. The fact is... Her book is failing, and here's what I think, to be honest with you, because now she's going around on all these major TV networks talking about her book, even going on CNN multiple times talking about her book. I think, and also, let's also remember that Hillary Clinton's book failed too. So Hillary Clinton's book was a miserable failure. Megyn Kelly's book, not as miserable as Hillary's, but still failing. 
And I think the truth is she's just really ticked off that Michael Savage trounced her book so badly without a tenth of the publicity that she got. So sorry, Megan, you're losing and real journalism is winning. 9-11 mastermind Al-Qaeda favors immigration to defeat USA. Now, regardless of what you think about this headline, the lesson to be learned here is this. Are we going to have an open border or are we going to try to stop terrorism? If there is really this threat of terrorism, why is our border wide open, folks? This is common sense. This is, this is standard logic. Why can't Americans face this down? Why is the border wide open, yet... Terrorist attacks are apparently a threat. We get, we get terrorists arrested in New York, but the border's wide open. And now Al-Qaeda admits, of course they favor the immigration program. Of course they favor the refugee program. That's how they get in here. The good news, to close the news tonight, CDC says U.S. abortion rate falls to lowest level in decades. That's good news, folks. We don't need to make laws to make abortion illegal. Let's just make it the wrong thing to do in the hearts and minds of Americans. Make sure that you go to InfoWarsStore.com this weekend, folks. Black Friday specials are running right now. The best deals on your favorite products, Brain Force, nascent iodine, storable food. We've got it all at InfoWarsStore.com. Thanks to everybody who tuned in. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Owen Schroyer signing off for the InfoWars Nightly News.